right, what's up, guys? This is uh, Tristan Randall with Canis Media. Today I'm here with uh, Jonah Weingarten. Um, he is very prominent in the metal scene with various bands, Pure Maze, Terra Maze. Uh, should I list every 30 million things off? <laughs> probably not Probably not all at once. Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, I'm actually I'm going to start this off with a bit of a silly question, but uh, is it a coincidence that Pure Maze and Terra Maze have similar names? Uh, yeah, that's purely coincidence. I'm actually not a member of Terra Maze anymore. I don't know. I'm not sure if you were privy to that. But yeah, uh, I saw where that was a fairly recent development. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just played on the one album with them, and um, logistically, we kind of figured out that it didn't make sense um, for me to stay in the band because they wanted to play live more, and they're all the way over in Australia. Just and made it. I'm here. Travel. In- so yeah, it's just and I wasn't able to rehearse with them and yeah, it, it when you're you have twelve minute songs with a uh, half a million notes in them and it's that complicated it you have to rehearse a lot and so um but uh they're great guys and I certainly wish them well in the future. Very, very talented bunch of guys. I know you've worked with Matt Barlow on multiple occasions. First in Pure Maze, I believe, when he came in as the vocalist. Then later, when you had com- when you did compositions for Ashes of Aries, uh, have you guys floated the idea of We're Sentinels around for a while now, or was it more of a spur of the moment idea that you one of you had and you built upon? Um, well, he joined Pure Maze on stage for three songs, uh, actually four songs, when we played Proud Power USA in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um. And then uh, him and I were talking sometime after the show about doing a project or an album together or something. Um, and it was actually Matt's idea to do something that wasn't... It was, like, outside the box, I guess. Mm-hmm. He wanted to do something that was just me and him. Um, and uh, so I started writing music right away for that, and then it just this is just sort of how, what it became um, was this sort of a, a mixture of film score music and piano music and just sort of keyboards in general. Um, and the sound evolved as I was writing the album. So, um, and we're actually, I've actually written an entire second album and we're going to start working on that uh, within the next year, I believe, as far as vocals and storylines go. So you are carrying forward the project? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think we'll do at least one more album, and um, the reception on the first album has been really good uh, for the most part. I think some people were kind of confused because it's not metal, and it's like, wait, uh, Matt Barlow and Jonah Weingarten are doing something that isn't metal. Like, what is this? You know, where are the guitars? And, you know, all the kind of questions that you would expect to hear. Mm -hmm. So we didn't mean to cause any mass confusion. We're just trying to make some good music, you know? You gotta be unique, you know, some people aren't gonna accept that, and that's okay. You know, that's actually kind of my follow-up question, was uh, how are things looking for it? Uh, did You did get the response you were uh, hoping for? Yeah, um, you know, some some people liked it, and I think the people that were expecting metal or people that are n- maybe not quite as open-minded um, didn't like it, and that's cool because... You know, we have things like Pyramids and we have things like Ashes of Aries that already exist. So if you want to hear me and Matt do metal, then those things exist also. Yeah, I feel like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you wrote the entirety of the score for uh, that, right? For the yep. Weird Sentinels album? Yep, yep. Every note was written by me uh, musically. And then I gave the songs to Matt and he wrote all his lyrics and vocal melodies on top of that. Yeah, I feel like... Uh... I feel like that might have a stronger place in your heart com- uh, considering, you know, it's all you and it's not more collaborating with a bunch of people and trying to bid it, make all the pieces fit. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's nice to have um, another outlet for uh, my creativity. It, in the past, I, I had done a couple albums that were only like piano instrumental music and only keyboards uh, mm-hmm. uh, that not a lot of people know about, but... I just kind of have that side of my musicality, and then, but then be able to work with someone like Matt, who has got to be the most uh, like dynamic vocalist that I've ever known. Is has been really incredible. So plus, he's uh, he's one of my best friends in the whole world, and just to be able to hang out with him and you know do something fun like this is also great. You know, just on a on a personal note. 
What is your favorite song or even an album you've worked on? It could be a band release or even a film or game soundtrack you've worked on. I know it may be kind of hard to narrow those down, so you know, feel free to name off multiple. Um. Oh boy. I mean, uh, the new Pyramids record that's going to be coming out next year has definitely been um, an incredible experience for me. Um, when we did, I would say maybe when we did the Bone Carver, because we all uh, stayed in Jacob Hansen's studio in Denmark back in 2005 mm-hmm. for a month, and that's the only time I've ever had like a fully immersive album recording experience where we all like lived together and like lived and breathed the songs as we were recording. Um, so it's hard to really pinpoint a favorite. I think every experience is different. And then, of course, you once you have the album out and you get a response to the album um, that you've made, then that can sort of sway. Sway your decision. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew when we were making the Immortal album that it was going to be something really special. And, um, you know, that's been the biggest album we ever did, which was the one that Matt sang on. I feel like that almost probably uh, sparked Weird Sentinels in a way, too, with that uh, Legacy and Rhyme song. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we re- we received so much, so many accolades for that one song on the album, that, um, mm-hmm. and that was just a collaboration between me and Matt. So that was definitely one of the seeds that was planted that, um, that led to Weird Sentinels, for sure. Is there a musician or band you want to work with, but it just hasn't fallen into place, or you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet? Um, well, uh, I mean, I suppose in the metal world, one of my favorite singers is Yorn Land. I've always wanted to work Oh, with man, him. I love Yorn. I love yeah. his work in Aventasia for sure. Um, he's a really great vocalist. I mean, other than that, I've already gotten to work with a lot of uh, my childhood heroes. Um, like, growing up, I was a huge In Flames fan, and um, I've now worked on two albums with Jesper Stromblad um, with his new band Syrah. I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard Syrah. I have. Yeah, they have, a, great. they have a new album coming out um, next month on Nuclear Blast, and I played on a couple songs for that album. And then on their debut, I, I played on, um, I think, five of the tracks on that one also. Um, dope. Yeah, I mean, and then um, I've been working on some other things. Unfortunately, there's things I can't talk about because of um, you know, the way that labels like to promote albums and this and that and the other. But yeah, I've, basically I've, have a waiting period. I've never, I'm never not working on an album now, which is a really good place for me to be in in my career. Um, and if I feel like every year that I have at least three to four albums that come out um, on labels worldwide, um, and yeah. I mean, it's getting to the point where I don't even have time to work on things for fun anymore. Um, but I guess that's a good problem to have. So That was actually going to be my follow-up question, was literally just, you really don't know what the term taking time off is, do you? I don't. <laughs> um, last winter, I had a few weeks where I, I like somehow had some time to work on something that was just for me. And mm-hmm. so I created a project um, that I haven't even like released or officially announced yet called um, Jonah Weingarten's Ninja Brigade, which is just, it's like 80s like synthwave montage music, you know? Mm-hmm. Like sort of my interpretation of what you would hear like on like the Rocky IV soundtrack or um, like on a video game like Double Dragon or it's just like totally ridiculous and there's, um, you know, it's very like, uh, 80s analog synth sounding and there's like shredding guitar solos on it um, so if you can imagine like a ninja standing on a mountaintop with like a thunderstorm and he's like wailing on a guitar and there's like hot babes all around and you know you gotta get to the final boss and win the game like that kind of thing you know and maybe mm-hmm. like a complete montage then yeah it's, it would be the soundtrack to that it's totally absurd that sounds pretty fun actually yeah um but there's a there's a, a professional jujitsu um, athlete who who has been using my music for his uh, 
like intro intros to like come out in the arena too and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. um, using it for some of his theme music, which has been really cool. So, I mean, there's been that, but at some point when the time is right, I will release that stuff. But um, you know, uh, most of the time, I guess I just have to take myself, to, you know, seriously. So. Um, I know you've already talked about some of the things you have coming up, and you know you have things you can't talk about. Do you have anything come up that you can talk about that you're currently working on? Well, uh, we've been very public about the new Pyramids record. Um, I finished my keyboards for that over the summer, and um, they're working on the vocals now. They're doing the vocals in two different sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, they've already got five songs done, so they're going to do the other uh, five or six songs or whatever in November. Um, and that's coming out amazing. It's really an, uh, a cool mixture of like old and new pyramids. So I think like fans of Disciples of the Sun, the Disciples of the Sun album will really like it. But there's definitely some strong uh, Melancholy Beast and Bone Carver and Immortal vibes in there too. Um, so that yeah, I think that people are gonna really like the album. It's got it's got a little bit of a um, like a modern rock thing going in there too but I feel like we've, mm-hmm. we've, we've really had that anyway for the last few albums so I think people are kind of already expecting that so yeah there's that um, things that I can talk about that's about it because the other <laughs> the other four things that I'm working mm-hmm. on right now I can't talk about unfortunately because it's all like uh, label stuff overseas um I'm going to be doing some more keyboards for this band called Night Crowned. Uh, they're a, like a black metal band from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be doing another track or two for them sometime this fall when I can fit that in, which is cool because I get to do more like Demu Borgir type of stuff, um, which I really like. I, like I do that. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, an, it's a nice sound. Yeah. I love like the... Because really, if you listen to their keyboards, it sounds like John Williams, but then they have the heavy guitars and the <laughs> stuff and all that. But it all kind of works together. You know, so. Yeah, Night Crowned. They're on a label called Black Lion Records. So that'll be cool. Uh, that'll be for their second album. I already played on their first album, which was like an EP. This actually isn't one of the questions I have on. Do you have any idea how much, like, you're credited in discography? Like, any idea what the number is, songs, albums, anything? No, I, I lost count. But that, that's good. <laughs> um, I st- so I just uh, I bought a house in May uh, with my girlfriend Mallory, and we have been framing all the vinyl albums that I've ever played on, and we still haven't even hung, hung them up yet, but... We we keep having to go to Hobby Lobby to buy more of these uh, these like nice vinyl frames to hang up on the wall. Mm-hmm. There's just more and more and more vinyl. And so eventually, my goal is that you won't even be able to see any of the wallpaper in my home. It's just only going to be uh, albums that I've played on frames. See, I've actually been doing something really similar with my photography. Anytime I do photography for a band, I'll get a vinyl, get them to sign it, have the mm-hmm. pictures. I've got a huge stack over there. I've got a stack of... Um... Shadow box is over here. I haven't found the time to actually go through and put them up though, but I have basically the same concept. Nice. Yeah, I mean you gotta have your accomplishments up, and I mean, what's it all for, you know? So, are you uh, are you a, a prog power person? Do you ever attend prog power? I've never been. Okay. Where does it take place at? It's in Atlanta. It's not that far from you. That isn't that far. I've been to Louder Than Life. I've been. You know, I go to concerts constantly, but I haven't really gotten to go to that many um, festivals. You should say. you should go to Prague Bar. It's uh, the best power and progressive metal festival in the U.S., and it's just a, a stone's throw away from you. I think the lineup this uh, in 2020 is going to be really fantastic, so you should. I'll definitely keep an eye out on that. Maybe I can yeah. give me a photo pass for it. Right. Last question. Um, my interviews always end in strange questions, and uh, unfortunate for you, yours is no exception. Uh, if you only had the option to eat mayonnaise or barbecue sauce for the rest of your life, which would it be? I drown everything I eat in barbecue sauce. So that's, so that's an easy one. Easy one, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I like pasta salads, which are, are usually drowning in mayonnaise, but um, 
Yeah, I, I always have like a bottle of barbecue sauce in my refrigerator. Right now, it's uh, it's a company called Rufus Teague. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I have not. I recommend it. Yeah, Rufus Teague made some sauce. And he put it in a jar and shared it with the boys. See, I've even remembered like what it says on the label. <laughs> the label. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I lived in the South for um, a decade. Uh, so, where about? Um, South Carolina. I lived in Atlanta. I lived in Florida, and I lived in Virginia Beach. So in my twenties, I um, moved around a lot. You know, trying to find find my place with uh, some different bands and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Moved around a lot and lived in the South, so barbecue was my jam. I personally can't stand it, even though I grew up around it. Cannot stand it. <laughs> That's why that question I gave you, I couldn't eat either of them. Well, I, I just started to death. Uh, you can just give me all the barbecue sauce then, and you can have the mayonnaise. Deal? I'll probably be using the mayonnaise for like hair treatment, and that's it, but you know. <laughs> do what we gotta do. Yeah, when you run out of hair gel, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> gotta make do with what you got. For some reason, uh, there's something about Mary Pops in my head right now, but we won't go there because we're going to keep this G-rated, right? Pretty sure I might have cussed on this. I'm not sure. It's possible. I don't think it did. But uh, anyways, this has been uh, Tristan Rendell with Canis Media interviewing Jonah Weingarten. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say before we hop off? Uh, no, I don't think so. I just hope that uh, everyone that... Uh, has been a fan of my music up until now will continue to be so in the future and I'll just keep making music that's pretty straightforward yeah and uh, be kind to one another especially on social media people are so mean these days oh man trolls are all over the place that's my public service announcement Your PSA yeah yeah be nice <laughs> be nice to each other we are we're all different and have different opinions and ideals and uh, that's okay. All right. Well, uh, that's all you got. That's all I got. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.